Hello everyone, welcome to Panacea Tutor. Today, in this video, we are going to discuss the topic Dividend Decisions. Under Dividend Decisions, we will cover the theories of dividend and the types of different dividend policy. First of all, if you are new to our channel, please subscribe our channel and do hit the bell icon so that whenever we upload any video, you can get the notification. Now, we will begin our discussion from Dividend Decisions. What are Dividend Decisions? Dividend decision is one of the crucial decision that the top management has to take. Under this, they have to decide that whether the company should declare the dividend or not. After deciding that the company should declare the dividend, the dividend payout ratio has to be decided. That is, what will be the dividend payout ratio, whether it will be 0%, 100%, 20% or 30%. While taking the dividend decisions, the company must keep in mind that the main objective of the company is maximization of wealth of the shareholders. So the dividend decision must be taken in lieu of this objective. Moving on to theories of dividend. Theories of dividend are divided into two parts, theory of relevance and theory of irrelevance. Under theory of irrelevance, we will study two approaches, residual approach and MM approach. And under theory of relevance, we will study two model, the Walter model and the Gordon model. From examination point of view, under dividend theories, the assumptions of these approaches as well as the formulas of the models are very important. Many times UGC have asked the question from the assumptions and sometimes the formulas has also come in the form of match the column. So we will discuss the assumptions and formulas in detail. Moving towards the theories of dividend. First theory we are going to discuss is theory of irrelevance. What is theory of irrelevance? According to theory of irrelevance, dividend decision is irrelevant as far as the valuation of the firm is concerned and the market price of the share is concerned. It means dividend decision has no effect on the value of the firm and the market price of the shares. Under theory of irrelevance, we will study two approaches, the MM approach and the residual approach. Residual approach is covered under the theory of irrelevance. So in this approach, the dividend decision is irrelevant as far as the valuation of the firm is concerned or the market value of the share is concerned. What do you mean by the word residual? Residual means the decision which is taken after taking all other major decisions. So in the residual approach, dividend decision is considered as a residual decision. It means the dividend decision is taken after taking all other major decisions. Dividend decision is just merely a part of simple financing decision and dividend decision has no effect on the value of the firm. Our next approach is Modi, Galani and Miller approach. This approach is also covered under the theory of irrelevance. From examination point of view, the assumptions and the formulas of this approach are very important. Many times UGC have asked the question from MM approach. So we will study the assumptions of MM approach in detail. As we are studying the theory of irrelevance, so under MM approach also, dividend decision has no effect on the value of the firm as well as on the market price of the shares. Moving towards the assumptions. The first assumption is perfect capital market exists. It means the firm is operating in a scenario of perfect capital market. The second assumption is investors behave rationally. It means investors are rational while they are taking their decision. The third assumption is information about the company is available to all. The fourth assumption is the firm has a rigid investment policy. And the last assumption is there are no flotation and transaction costs. So you should do these assumptions in detail and very carefully. Now, as you can see on your screen, there are three formulas under the MM approach and these three formulas are very important from the examination point of view. Our next theory is relevance theory. What do you mean by relevance theory? According to the theory of relevance, dividend decision is relevant as far as the valuation of the firm is concerned and the market price of share is concerned. It means dividend decision will affect the value of the firm and also the market price of the share will be affected by the dividend decisions. Under theory of relevance, we will study two models, the Walter model and the Gordon model. These both models are same as these are based upon theory of relevance. The only difference in both these models is of their assumptions and the formula which is used to calculate the value of the firm. Moving towards the Walter model. Now according to Professor Walter, this model is based upon the relationship between the rate of return and the firm's cost of capital. Now Professor Walter has divided the firms into three categories. The normal firms, the declining firms and the growth firms. In case of growth firms, 
द रेट ऑफ रिटर्न इज ग्रेटर दैन द कॉस्ट ऑफ कैपिटल इन केस ऑफ डिक्लाइनिंग फॉर्म्स द रेट ऑफ रिटर्न इज लेस दैन द कॉस्ट ऑफ कैपिटल एंड इन केस ऑफ नॉर्मल फॉर्म द रेट ऑफ रिटर्न इज इक्वल टू द कॉस्ट ऑफ कैपिटल एज यू कैन सी ऑन योर स्क्रीन द डिविडेंट पे आउट रेशो फॉर ईच एंड एवरी फॉर्म इज गिवन इन केस ऑफ ग्रोथ फॉर्म द डिविडेंट पे आउट रेशो इज जीरो परसेंट नाउ वाई दिस इज जीरो परसेंट दिस इज जीरो परसेंट बिकॉज इन केस ऑफ ग्रोथ फॉर्म ग्रोथ फॉर्म्स आर हैविंग मेनी प्रॉफिटेबल अपॉर्चुनिटीज सो इट इज एडवाइजेबल फॉर दैम द डिविडेंट पे आउट रेशो फॉर दीज फॉर्म शुड बी जीरो परसेंट एंड दे शुड इन्वेस्ट देयर अमाउंट एंड दे शुड इन्वेस्ट देयर अर्निंग्स इन ऑल द प्रॉफिटेबल अपॉर्चुनिटीज सो दैट देयर वैल्यू ऑफ द फॉर्म कैन बी इंक्रीज एंड द मार्केट प्राइज ऑफ द शेयर कैन बी इंक्रीज इन केस ऑफ डिक्लाइनिंग फॉर्म वेयर आर इज लेस देन के इट इज एडवाइजेबल फॉर दीज फॉर्म दैट द डिविडेंट पे आउट रेशो शुड बी हंड्रेड परसेंट वाई इट इज हंड्रेड परसेंट सो दैट इन्वेस्टर्स गेट अट्रैक्टेड द मार्केट वैल्यू ऑफ द फॉर्म कैन बी इंक्रीज एंड द मार्केट प्राइस ऑफ द शेयर कैन बी इंक्रीज दैट्स वाई द डिविडेंट पे आउट रेशो इन दिस इज हंड्रेड परसेंट नाउ इन केस ऑफ नॉर्मल फॉर्म इट इज ऑलवेज सेट दैट एवरी डिविडेंट पे आउट रेशो इज ऑप्टिम वेदर अ कंपनी डिक्लेयर जीरो परसेंट डिविडेंट टेन परसेंट डिविडेंट ट्वेंटी परसेंट डिविडेंट और हंड्रेड परसेंट डिविडेंट एवरी डिविडेंट पे आउट रेशो फॉर नॉर्मल फॉर्म विल बी ऑप्टिम बिकॉज इन दिस केस द आर इज इक्वल टू के The formula for this model is very important. You can see on your screen, and many times this formula has been asked in UGC. Now moving towards the assumptions of the Walter model. Assumptions of Walter model are very important, so we will discuss it in detail. The first assumption is the investment firms are financed only through retained earnings. It means no external source of funds are available for the firms. The second assumption is. R that is rate of return and the cost of capital of the firm is constant. The third assumption is earnings and the dividend do not change. And the last assumption is the firm has a very long life. Moving towards Gordon approach. Gordon approach is also based upon the theory of relevance. So dividend decision in this case will also affect the value of the firm as well as the market price of the shares. The only difference between the Walter and the Gordon model is relating to their assumptions and is of their formula. The assumptions for the Gordon model are as follows: the rate of return of the firm is constant. No external financing is available to the firms in this case also. Now, in this, there is one assumption related to the retention ratio and the growth rate. The retention ratio, that is B, is constant. The growth rate of the firm is constant, and the cost of capital is greater than the growth rate. It is one of the assumption of the Gordon model. Now moving towards the classification of the firms done by Gordon. Gordon has also classified the firms into three types that is the normal firms, the growth firms and the declining firms. As you can see on your screen in case of normal firms R is equal to K, in case of declining firms R is less than K and in case of growth firms R is greater than K. So it is advisable to the declining firms that their dividend payout ratio should be hundred percent so that the market price of their shares can be increased. For growth firms where R is greater than K, it is advisable for them that their dividend payout ratio should be zero percent so that the value of these firms can be increased and the market price of the shares can be increased. And in case of normal firm, as we have studied earlier, every dividend payout ratio is optimum in case of normal firm. With these, our theories of dividend are finished. Next topic is types of dividend policy. What is dividend policy? After the firm has taken the decision that the company is going to declare the dividend, the next decision is what will be the amount of the dividend, at what time the dividend should be declared, to whom the dividend should be declared. So all these decisions are taken under the dividend policy. And you must know that dividend policy is an integral part of the corporate strategy. Now moving our discussion towards the different type of dividend policies. The first dividend policy is regular dividend policy. Regular dividend policy is mostly preferred by the retired person, by the widows, or by the weaker sections of the society. Now, what happens under the regular dividend policy? Under regular dividend policy, the company pays dividend at the regular rate, and also the company pay the dividend every year. It means whether a company is earning profit or not, the company will declare the dividend. If a company is not earning profit in any year, then it will declare the dividend out of its reserve. So, under regular dividend policy, dividend is paid at a fixed rate and is paid every year. Next is stable dividend policy. Under stable dividend policy, there are stable dividends. It means the company declares the dividend every year. No, as such, dividend payout ratio is decided or the amount of dividend is decided, but a company will 
declare the dividend every year now the types of stable dividend policy can be constant dividend per share constant dividend payout ratio or stable dividend plus extra dividend our next dividend policy is irregular dividend policy under irregular dividend policy the company is irregular by declaration of dividend it means whenever the company will be having profit then only it will declare the dividend and when the company is not earning any profit it will not declare any dividend the last dividend policy is no dividend policy under this policy the company is having no compulsion to declare the dividend this policy is followed by those companies which do not have a regular earnings and which have uncertainty in their earnings so this was all about today's lecture thank you if you want to avail the courses of ugc net and management you can call us on the given number or whatsapp us and you can also mail us on the given mail id thank you very much